Hey Mad Minders, thanks for tuning in to Mad Minds TV. This week's studies was on entrepreneurship. Five scholarly papers reviewed, and the paper I gravitated to is called On Some of the Misconceptions About Entrepreneurship. It was published in 2012 and written by Murray Hunter. The reference is below. The moment I started reading this paper, I didn't put it down. That's how much relevant information there was in there for me based on my current journey. It's not the shortest paper, and because of that, I'm only going to touch on chapters 2, chapter 4, and chapter 8. Chapter 2 looks at entrepreneurship as a life cycle. You have an idea, you create a business, you decide growth trajectory, and then based on that, did you create a monopoly? Do you have a large market share? And if you do, that's when complacency can come in, which brings a whole host of other issues. Then chapter four talks about characteristics of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. It has a table that uses words that people use to describe entrepreneurs. And some of those words are visionary, creative, foresight, honest, self-reliant, independent. And it also discusses questions entrepreneurs tend to ask themselves, which are who I am, what I do, and how I feel. And I know a lot of us have asked those questions over the last few years. Lastly, chapter eight talks about concepts, basically having an idea and bringing it to the table. And this is what kind of drove it home for me. It gave examples of companies that did market research, did everything the data says they're supposed to do, created a product, released that product, and it didn't actually work out like they planned. After that, they created frameworks to make sure those results never happened again, or they decreased the probabilities of those results happening again. And the reason why this chapter hit home for me is because this paper also says something. A successful product doesn't make a successful business, and that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. If you're interested in becoming an entrepreneur, I definitely recommend reading this paper. I wish I'd have read this paper or knew it even existed prior to starting my journey. However, I did do plenty of research. Now, when we're going to talk about my entrepreneurship experience and knowledge, we have to go back to 2009. In 2009, I was in northern Iraq in an area called Kirkuk. And the team I was on, we had our own MRAPs. And if you're not familiar with an MRAP, here's a screenshot. I would occasionally take it to get maintained. I would talk to the mechanics because I want to build social bridges. I would tell them what I was experiencing and they would do the same. One of the older mechanics sat me down and told me a story. And I'm not sure if this story is accurate. I just have to throw that out there or even real, but I have to throw that out there for, of course, legal reasons. He explained to me that when those vehicles were first brought in the country, they had a lot of suspension problems. Parts on the suspension were constantly breaking. Luckily, he had a mechanic on his team that spent most of his career working on 18 wheelers, semis or lorries depending on whatever country you're in. The mechanic walked around the vehicles, looked at the suspension, and determined it looked like they just basically took a normal truck suspension, beefed it up, and put it on that vehicle, and that wasn't going to work. He designed some parts, had them fabricated, put them on a few vehicles, it fixed all the issues, the company took the parts he designed, pushed it out to everyone else, Everybody's happy. He saved the day. That company made a lot of money. And all he got was a pat on the back. And to kind of add insult to it, when his contract was up, they didn't actually renew it for him to actually come back to that area and make the same amount of money he was making. So that old mechanic explained that if you ever have great ideas, you may be better off opening or creating a business. He said, what should have happened 
which that guy would have been better off taking all that information, leaving, patenting that, patenting the designs, creating his own business, and then selling that business back to the company with those patents to create generational wealth for himself and his family. But that's not what happened. He was adamant, whatever you do, do not give up your best ideas to companies that will throw you aside like a used condom. And that's something that's always stuck with me, especially with everything that's going on at the moment. So now that I've shared, I have two questions for you. First question, why do people give up their best ideas for pats on the back or inflated promotion reports when they can take those ideas and either create a business, patent themselves, and try and create generational wealth for themselves and their family members? The second question is, what would you have done if you were that mechanic? Would you have done the same thing he did, or would you have taken the advice of the older mechanic and then went that route? Regardless of your answer, let me know the comments below. Uh, please give me feedback on this video, likes, dislikes, ways to improve it. As always, these videos are just me thinking out loud. Don't take them for advice and or guidance. And whatever you do, stay mad, be well. Thanks again. See you later.